Have you ever wondered how your walls would look in a different color? In this Photoshop tutorial, I'm going to show you a professional technique to change wall colors in Photoshop. Hi, welcome back to the Photoshop Training Channel. I'm Jesus Ramirez. In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint your walls in Photoshop. We will start with a basic technique for quick jobs. This will only take a few minutes. Then we will move on to a more advanced professional technique. You will learn a lot about how color and blending modes work in this video. Specifically, I'm going to show you an advanced technique that will change how clipping masks work so that you can get the most out of them. Let's just get right into the tutorial. This is a document that we're going to work with. If you want to follow along with me, then look down below in the description. There's a link to this photo. Also, I have a finished document here as well that I'm going to refer to, but I'll mostly work with this document. So the technique that I want to show you is an advanced technique, but before we get to it, I'm going to show you a basic technique. This is similar to the technique that a lot of people show, and I just wanted to show it to you so that you can see one of the drawbacks, and also so that you can use it in case you don't need precision. Sometimes you just want to mock something up really quick, and you don't need to be precise, and that's okay. So this technique is great if you don't want to be precise, but make sure that you stick around because the second technique is really what I want to show you. So the basic technique is quite simple. All you need to do is use the quick selection tool and click and drag around the areas that you want to colorize. If you select an area that you did not intend to select, you can hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and click and drag to deselect, like so. And always click and drag to select. Obviously, I'm not going to spend a lot of time fine-tuning this selection because this is not really what I want to show you. But again, I wanted to show you this basic technique first. It's quicker, but not as precise. After you have your selection active, you can go into the hue and saturation adjustment layer. Photoshop will create a layer mask based on the selection that you had. That means that when you adjust the hue, only the selected pixels will change. You can see that this is doing a fairly good job in changing the wall color. What you need to do next is adjust the layer mask accordingly. You can zoom in, select the brush tool, and paint with white to reveal the effect like so. And if you make a mistake, you can paint with black to conceal the effect. So this is how the basic technique works. You can make a selection over the areas that you want to colorize. Then with the selection active, you can create a hue and saturation adjustment layer. Then from the properties panel, you can use the three sliders to control the color. The hue slider controls the color. It makes the selected color into a different color. Saturation controls the intensity of that color, and the lightness controls the brightness of the color. And this is where the biggest problem comes into play with this technique. The brightness slider can flatten out the shadows if you drag it into an extreme, or if you are turning a dark color into a bright one. If you think about it, it makes sense. It's just one slider controlling all the tonal range of the image, and you have no control over the contrast, which I think is very important when changing colors. Even if you check the colorized checkbox, you will run into these issues. This is why I don't prefer this technique over the one that I'm about to show you, but to get an idea of how something would look or for a project that doesn't require much precision, this is totally fine. So I'm going to delete this layer and I'm now going to focus on the advanced technique. This is a technique that I recommend that you use if you want precision. Maybe if you're doing this for a client and you're getting paid, then you obviously want to do it the most professional way possible. So. First, how do you make the selection? Well, we're dealing with walls and a lot of straight edges. And the best way of getting straight, smooth selections in Photoshop, as you probably know, is by using the pen tool and creating a vector mask. If you don't know what a vector mask is, don't worry. I have a tutorial that talks all about vector masks. I'll place a link to it down below in the description. For this video, all you need to know is that the pen tool will help you create a work path and from that work path, you can create a vector shape or a vector mask. A path is simply a Vessier curve, a mathematical equation. They work great for straight edges and man-made objects, but they don't work so great when you're trying to select hair, vegetation, things like that. So with my pen tool active, I'm going to create a vector path that follows the shape of this back wall. I'm going to click here to start the vector shape, and I'm going to click on all the walls corners and come back around to the original point. When I click on it again, it will close the work path. Notice that I was not very precise. I can always come back and edit my work path. Obviously, I will need to do that 
Next, I'm going to convert this work path into a vector shape so that it contains the color in the shape of this wall. And you can do so by going into the new adjustment layer icon and selecting the solid color fill layer. This new vector shape is currently inverted. No worries about that for now. We can change that layer. First, I'll focus on selecting the right color for my wall. I'm going to go for a muted blue. Notice that every color has three components, hue, saturation, and brightness. First, I'll adjust the hue, which helps you select the color that you want. Is it blue, green, yellow, red, or anything that you want? I'll select a blue right around this range. Then you have the saturation, how intense the color is. If you drag it all the way to the left, you have zero saturation, which becomes gray. And all the way to the right gives you the maximum saturation for that particular hue. So you get a much more rich blue. In this case, I want something right in the middle, around 50% or so. Then you have the third component, the brightness, how dark that color is. If you drag up, then it's bright. If you drag down, then it's dark. Again, I want something right in the middle. About 40% brightness should work. And this looks pretty good. I'll press OK. Notice that my color fill layer affected everything but the wall. So we need to invert that. And to do so, you need to go into the options bar, click on this icon and select combine shapes. That will make it so that that wall turns blue. Remember how I talked about that each color had three components, hue, saturation, and brightness? Well, we need to apply the hue and saturation of this blue onto the brightness of the background. So how do we do that? In Photoshop, it's very, very simple to do. All you need to do is click on this dropdown, which is a list of blending modes. Notice that the blending modes have these lines that divide them up into different categories. If you want to learn more about blending modes, I have a great tutorial that goes into in-depth detail about each one. I'll place a link to that tutorial down below in the description. But anyway, the group at the very bottom controls the components that I was talking about, hue, saturation, color, and luminosity. I want to apply the hue in the saturation of that blue onto that wall. To do that, all I need to do is select color. The color blending mode will disregard the brightness and only apply the hue and saturation of the color of this layer. And that's how we get that result that you see there. Before we go any further, I would like to explain what we have here. In the layers panel, we have a vector shape that we made from a solid fill layer. And we're going to use this vector shape to both apply a color and mask an area. This is very important to understand. This is not a vector mask. This is a vector shape. Although we could think about it as a mask. Next, I'm going to show you a really powerful advanced technique. I haven't seen many people teach this on YouTube and that's what I like teaching in the Photoshop training channel. Professional techniques that you don't often see. And what I'm gonna do is create a levels adjustment layer. The black point helps you make pixels darker, like so. The white point helps you make pixels brighter and the center point controls the contrast of the image. Then you have the two points here at the bottom. The one on the left tells Photoshop how dark the darkest pixel is. Currently, the darkest pixel is black. But if I drag this to the right, now the darkest pixel is no longer black, is this shade of gray. The same thing is true for the white point on the right. If I drag it to the left, then the brightest pixel of the image will no longer be white. It is now this shade of gray. So the levels adjustment layer gives us total control over the brightness of this image. And that's what I want. So if I make an extreme adjustment like so, I want it to apply to the wall. So how do I do that? Well, one way would be to make a selection out of the vector shape. You can do so by holding control on Windows, command on the Mac, and clicking on the vector shape thumbnail. Then delete the mask from the levels adjustment layer and create a new mask based on the active selection. And this works pretty good, right? Well, sort of. If I adjust the vector shape, the mask will not update automatically. Let me show you what I mean by that. If I select the direct selection tool and drag on a point to adjust the shape, the mask will not change along with the vector shape. I will have to recreate the mask for them to match again. This is definitely not a good way to work. You always want to be able to make changes without it becoming a hassle. So clearly, this is not a good solution. But what is? You're probably thinking that you can apply a clipping mask and that would sort of work. When I apply it, this levels adjustment layer applies that adjustment 
to the layer below, but notice how it's not affecting the background layer. That's because the clipping mask only affects the layer that is clipped onto. So this wouldn't work either. But luckily, Photoshop has this hidden feature that not a lot of people know, where you can make it so that the levels adjustment layer affects everything below, but it uses the shape of the layer below as a mask. So let me show you how that works. If I double click to the side of the color fill layer, not the levels adjustment layer, the color fill layer, it will bring up the layer style window. From here, under advanced blending, there's an option called blend clip layers as group. Watch what happens when I uncheck that. See how now the levels adjustment layer applies its adjustment to all the layers below, but it uses the confinements of the color fill layer to control what areas it affects. And that's exactly what we want because now I can control the brightness of all the layers, but confine it to the shape of the color fill layer. So if I make an adjustment to that color fill layer, watch what happens. See that? The levels adjustment layer also affects those areas. And that's exactly what I want. I think that this is a pretty cool technique. If you found it useful, make sure that you click on that like button now and let me know in the comments if you knew it already. So now I could come back and adjust the levels adjustment layer accordingly. I could adjust the contrast of this layer to get an appropriate blue. If I need to make the shadows darker, I can definitely do that by clicking and dragging the black point to the right. If I need to make the highlights brighter, I can also do that as well. So it gives me total control of the contrast of the image. And that's what the hue and saturation adjustment layer cannot give me. Remember how the hue and saturation adjustment layer only gave me one slider to control the brightness? Well, this technique gives me five control points, making it extremely useful. I know that this method takes a few more steps to complete, but I think that the results are worth it. If you have been watching the Photoshop training channel for a while, then you know that I prefer elegant methods that give me total control over my images. Next, I'll show you how you can refine the vector shape to hide the areas that should not have the color change applied to them. I'll zoom in, and there's really two things that you can do to refine the vector shape. Number one, create a vector shape that subtracts from the current shape. To do so, make sure that you select the vector shape that you're working with. This is very important. Then select the pen tool and create a path around the areas that you would like to subtract from. Once you close the path, if it doesn't subtract from the vector shape, then go into the options bar and select subtract from shape. And that subtracts the painting on the wall from the vector shape. And from the properties panel, you can feather the vector shape edges. In other words, you can make the edges blurry. You can do so by dragging the feather slider to the right. Notice how the edges are getting blurrier. Keep the slider in mind in case you need edges with a slight blur. Another thing I want to show you is what happens when you create a vector path, but you don't apply it to the proper layer. So let me show you what happens. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to create a vector mask on this light. I'll select the pen tool. Notice that this time I do not have the color fill layer selected. So it's not going to create it on that layer. So when I finish making my selection, you'll notice that it won't apply it to that color fill layer, even though I have subtract from shape selected. So if that happens to you, all you need to do is make sure that you have that work path selected in the paths panel. If you don't see it, go into window and paths. And with that work path selected, press control X on Windows, command X on the Mac to cut. Then in the layers panel, make sure that you select the color fill layer and press Control V on Windows, Command V on the Mac to paste, and Photoshop will mask that out. Again, making sure that Subtract from Shape is selected. So that is one way in which you can subtract from a vector shape if you created the work path in the wrong layer. Next, I want to talk about the second way in which you can subtract from a vector shape, and that is by creating a layer mask. This is just a vector shape layer, and you can apply a pixel-based mask just like you can to any layer. And I just want to drive a point home. We are working with a vector shape layer, not a vector mask. Although I may have called it a mask a few times, what we're doing here is using a vector shape to both apply a color and mask an area.
and you can add a layer mask to it as well. To show you how to do that, we will work with the same light. Notice that there is a bright light hitting the wall and it needs a bit of that yellow on there. A layer mask will be a great way of getting that light here. So I will click on the new layer mask icon and then I will select the brush tool from the toolbar. I'll make sure that black is my background color and I will paint over the lighted areas on the wall to reveal the yellow light. Obviously that is too intense, but I can always go into edit, fade. The fade command always fades the last step that you made. So my last step was the brush tool, so I can fade it. In other words, change the blending mode or the opacity. So now I can fade it in so that it matches my composite much better. I'll press OK, double click on the hand tool, and you can see how I'm achieving that result. Once again, I'll show you how to subtract from the vector shape since it's very important for this technique, and I'll also show you how to edit the path with the curvature pen tool. I'll zoom in, then I'll click on the vector shape from the layers panel to make sure that it's selected, and I'll select the pen tool. What I'll do now is trace along the edges of the bed to remove it from the vector shape. Notice that the edges are not perfect, and that's okay because I'll fine tune it in a moment. From the options bar, make sure that subtract front shapes is selected, and that will subtract from the vector shape. Next, from the toolbar, you can select the curvature pen tool and hover over the path and click on it to add a new point, and you can move that new point around to adjust the edge of the vector shape. Again, click on the path and drag up or down to adjust it accordingly. And obviously, that will take a little more time to get the edges correct, but in this case, I'm not gonna take the time to do that. And once you repeat this process over and over again on all the shapes, what you'll have is something that looks like this. So notice that I set up all the layers the same way. This is my layer that affects the back wall with the levels adjustment layer on top. And the same thing for the wall on the side and this one as well. And the reason that I have all the walls in separate layers is because I want to be able to control them independently from one another. So if a layer needs to be a little bit darker, I can do that. If it needs to be a little bit brighter, I can do that as well without affecting the other layers. Or maybe I can have a wall of a different color if I want to. So this is the flexibility that this method brings you. Now I want to show you one last masking trick, and that is for the wall back here where it has this ornament that is very difficult to select. So let me show you what I did there. First, I'm going to go back into this wall and I'm going to delete the layer mask so that you can see how the color fill affects that layer. And what I'll do is select the rectangular marquee tool and click and drag to select that area like so. Then I'll go into the original background layer and I'll press Control J on Windows, Command J on the Mac to put it into its own layer. By the way, I added all the color change layers into a single group. With this duplicate copy, I'm going to use a channel-based selection. And for things to work better, I'm going to create a solid color fill background and I'll make it white, like so. Then I'm going to go into the channels panel and see which channel gives me most contrast between the foreground and the background. In this case, it's the blue channel, so I'll click and drag the blue channel onto the new channel icon to duplicate it. Channels work a lot like selection. White reveals, black conceals. So I want to reveal the hard stir on the wall, and to do so, I need for them to be white and everything else to be black. So it's the opposite of what I have. In other words, I need to invert this. And you can invert in Photoshop by pressing Control i on Windows, Command-I on the Mac. And now the hearts are white, I just need to make the wall black. And I can go into Image, Adjustment, Levels, and use that same technique we used earlier. I can click on the black point and drag to the right to make the darker pixels darker. I can click on the white point and drag to the left to make the brighter pixels brighter. And if I need to, I can adjust the contrast here in the center, like so, and press. OK. Next, I need to load these white pixels as a selection. To do so, I can press Control on Windows, Command on the Mac, and click. That loads those pixels as a selection, and I can go into the RGB to bring back my original colors, go back into the Layers panel, and from this Color Change group, I'm going to add this selection into a layer mask. But before I do that, I'm just going to disable these layers because I don't need them anymore, enable the background, enable the color change layers, and find the layer that is controlling the color on this wall. 
And that is my right wall number one. It's always a good idea to name a layer so that you know what the layers control. And what I'm going to do now is create a layer mask. But if I simply create a layer mask, it's going to do the opposite. It's going to apply the blue to those hearts and then leave the wall its original color. So I want the opposite. And obviously I can just click on the invert color here and that will fix my problem. But there's a faster way of doing it. When you have a selection active, you can hold Alt on Windows option on the Mac and click on the layer mask icon to create an inverted mask. And that gives me the same result, just with fewer steps. And if you need to make an adjustment, you can. You can select the brush tool and paint with black to hide the effect. In other words, to hide the blue paint. And you can paint in the pixels accordingly, like so. Obviously, you might want to spend a little more time than what I did here, but this should give you the result that you see here. Now that everything is in its own layer, you have total control of each wall, what color the wall is, the contrast of the wall, everything. All you need to do is double click on one of these icons to bring up the color picker and change the hue if you like. And the levels adjustment layer above that can help you control the brightness of that color. So what did you think about this technique? I believe that having total control over your images is the way to go. Let me know if you agree in the comments down below. If you found this tutorial useful, make sure that you click on that like button now. Also, make sure that you watch my tutorial on Vector Mask. I think that you'll really enjoy it. I'll place a link to it down below in the description. And of course, if this is the first time that you visit the Photoshop Training Channel, make sure that you click on that subscribe and notification button so that you don't miss any future Photoshop tutorials. And if you haven't already, make sure that you check out the new Photoshop Training Channel Instagram account. You can find me at Photoshop Training Channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you again in the next Photoshop tutorial.